Do you know someone who is always moving things around? Whether it's the spices in their cabinet or the furniture in their office, it just seems like every time you visit them, things are always in a different place. There may be a reason for that. Maybe they pull their summer clothes out of the closet and put in their winter ones at certain times of the year. That type of thing certainly has a purpose. I'm not sure what furniture and spices have to do with anything, though. So how about this one? Do you know people who have their guest towels for the bathroom or their good dishes that never get to see the light of the dining room because they're too special? We wonder why they bother to have the nice things to begin with if they never get used and they never get to enjoy them. These are the people in our lives that just make it a little more interesting, right? Well, believe it or not, PowerPoint has its own little rearranging and hiding intricacies too. Although, unlike our friends and relatives, there are some very good and specific reasons to use them in PowerPoint. We hope that when we first create our slides, that we have a good, solid idea of what we're going to present. But that can change and evolve, and often does, as we develop the content. Once we get the entire thing done, we can step back and take a look, and decide if we might prefer something in a different place. It's kind of like surveying our office and deciding we want the desk over there instead of in front of the window. Arranging slides can help present information in a logical sequence. We typically want to build from foundational topics to more advanced ones, or from the beginning of a process through the end. Doing so helps us tell a better story about our topic, one that the audience can follow, understand, and apply more easily. We can rearrange slides in several different ways. One is to use the thumbnail pane. If we select one or more slides, we can just drag and drop to move them around. So if we select slide number four, we can then just drag that up between two and three, let it go, and we've just rearranged the slides. And this works very well for one or maybe a few slides, but it doesn't work very well when we want to work with a lot of content. In order to do that, it's usually better to work with the slide sorter view. So let's go ahead and move down to the view bar on the bottom right side of the screen and change to the slide sorter view. The first thing we're going to recommend that we wish more people would do is to remember to zoom in and out. We're currently looking at slides and can see the content fairly easily. If we zoom out, We can't see the content as easily, but we certainly can see more slides at any given time. Because they're all on the screen, moving large sections would be easier this way. I recommend that you zoom in and out at least a little bit to make sure that you can see things the way that you need to. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It just depends on how you're going to be doing it. But if you find that you're struggling, either because you can't see the content or because you can't see enough slides, the zoom tool is great in the slide sorter view. Don't be afraid to use it. We're actually going to zoom out a couple more clicks here so that we can see the end of our presentation. Now we can drag or drop a single slide or a range of slides, just like we could in the thumbnail pane. But another thing that we can do is we can make a copy of a slide. A really nice use of this is to take a copy of an agenda or a topics or a table of contents slide from the beginning of the presentation and make a copy of it at the end of the presentation so we can review what we learned. We happen to have our table of contents slide as slide number three. The easiest way to do this using drag and drop is to hold the control key while we drag. I'm now gonna drag this slide down almost all the way to the end. And then here's the key. We're gonna let go of the mouse first and then let go of the control key. And we now have a perfect copy. Yes, for those of you who are traditionalists, we also can use traditional cut and paste or copy and paste as well. Don't forget, we can also duplicate slides using the Control D command. If we're actually going to do something like what we just did, it's usually a good thing to modify the slide just a little bit. One of the easiest ways to get back to a specific slide so that we can edit it, because we can't do any editing in Slide Sorter View, is to simply double click the face of the slide. This brings it up in the normal view, at which point we can just make an edit. In this case, we're going to change the title from knowing Niagara Falls to what we now know. So a similar yet different title. And once that editing is done, we can pop back to our slide sort of view to continue organizing the presentation. We can't edit any content while we're working with the slide sort of view, but we can move slides and we can also delete slides. We actually have a duplicate. Originally, we had a bulleted slide that talked about the topics. And then we replace that, or at least we added in kind of a duplicate of that by using SmartArt. We don't need this duplicate slide, so we'll select it and press the delete key on our keyboard. Sometimes it's difficult to see that we've duplicated information until we're looking at the big picture using the slide sorter view. 
So remember, the slide sorter view is perfect for getting that overall big picture view of the presentation instead of the individual slides that we're more likely used to working with. One of the things that we can do in PowerPoint that isn't quite so obvious as just moving and deleting things is the ability to hide slides. If we're the ones who wonder why our relatives keep towels they never use because there's no occasion that's good enough for them, we're also probably going to wonder why we'd keep a slide if we're not going to show it. The answer actually relates to being a good presenter. A good presenter is prepared. A prepared presenter knows his or her audience and is prepared for things that they may want to know in more detail or that are slightly off topic. A prepared presenter may want to have alternative ways of presenting complex or difficult information to help their audience understand it if they need more than the original presentation provided. All of these things have to do with foreseeing what the audience might need or might ask and being prepared for it. Another way that we can assist our audience is to remember that we can print slides that are included in the presentation as part of handouts, even if we don't specifically show that slide during the presentation. So we may have a slide that details something that we're going to speak about. We don't want to show that detailed slide because it's probably a lot of bulleted text, but we can provide it in a handout so that they have a takeaway. These are all reasons to hide slides. We can have slides in place for the in-case scenarios, but don't have to show them unless the opportunity presents itself. We have one of those slides in our presentation. To make this a little bit easier to see, let's go ahead and collapse the slideshow section and expand out the Niagara Falls Info section. And we probably want to zoom in just a little bit so we can see our slides better. We have a slide that we've included called The Visitors. It happens to be slide number 11 at the moment. This kind of gets into the economics of tourism in the area, and we don't really want to get into this area unless our audience happens to ask about it. So we're going to have the slide in case they do. So we have a nice graphic that we can show with all of the numbers and things on it but we're not gonna show it as part of the planned presentation. By right-clicking on a slide, we can choose Hide Slide. And this can actually be done from the Slide Sorter view or the regular window. It also can be accessed by working with the Slideshow tab in the ribbon and using the Hide Slide option that's located in the Setup group. What we'll notice is that visually, the slide seems to be a little grayed out. We can still see it, but it's certainly not the same intensity of the other active slides. There also is a little hash mark or a slash over the slide number showing us that this has been hidden as well. This slide appears this way not only in the slide sorter view, but also in our thumbnail pane if we're working in the normal view. Once a slide is hidden, it won't show during a slideshow unless the presenter decides to show it. If that's the case, it's just a simple press of the H key. Remember, H stands for hidden. So during the presentation, if it's going along, talking about slide number 10, and all of a sudden the presenter says, you know what, this audience is really interested in tourism and the facts and figures related to that. By simply pressing the H key, it will display slide number 11. If not, then it will move immediately from slide 10 to slide 12. This way, we're perfectly prepared for any situation that we can foresee, but we don't have to show information we really don't want to unless it's necessary. That is the key to presenting well and to organizing presentations well. We need to ensure our content is in a logical, progressive order, but not show content we really don't want to unless it's necessary. Unlike those special towels, we can access and use our hidden slides with a simple press of a key, and no one will ever know that we didn't intend to use them to begin with. The ability to selectively hide slides as well as arrange them means that we can provide a smooth presentation that logically flows no matter what the specific presentation session may throw at us.